Um, so I guess uh, we've been involved with TAD summits pretty much since they started. Um, we tend in the Locatrix business to do things that aren't necessarily voice related but tend to be application based inside telcos. Um, an area we got into a couple of years ago was IoT network location. Um, to introduce it, I'll introduce us a little bit and then I'll talk a bit about the IoT business in the context of the mobile operators, what we see and how we play in that space. Um, and then I'll talk specifically about some cool stuff we did this year, um, which uh, it's cool in the context of very different to the way traditional location based services work. A little bit about our company. Um, we're based in uh, Brisbane, in Australia. Um, we've been focused on telecom industry solutions, value-added services for about 12 years. Uh, we have been successful in commercializing some products based on location-based services for mobile operators. Um, Telstra has been our biggest company, which is why their logo is the biggest. We've also done a lot of things both in Australia and also internationally for a bunch of different things. Um, we call our product, uh, our product in this space the uh, Location Control Center. It's a play on the uh, Jasper Control Center product. Um, it was a, a, an initial discussion we had with Telstra. Um, for those of you who know a little bit about the IoT space, you've probably heard of Jasper, now part of Cisco. Jasper provided provisioning service for mobile operators who want to operate Internet of Things or data-only SIMs separate to their existing HLR and billing systems. Um, so it's a cloud-based service. Um, and, uh, you know, this is an area that's kind of interesting for a lot of mobile operators because they see the growth potential in, in the Internet of Things as being pretty big. Uh, and it's kind of interesting because it's a completely different model to the way they normally sell SIM cards, the way they normally sell consumer or business services, and really different to the way they sort of sell and provision and price mobile broadband. Um, the interesting thing about all anything to do with the IoT, I mean, we were, we were all doing sort of IoT-based stuff 20 years ago. We just called it telemetry. Um, the big difference now is that everything comes with a big hockey stick at the end in terms of an uptick in number of devices, number of data, number of dollars you can make from it. Um, it is still very much, though, an emerging market in terms of the, the networks. I mean, those of you who are familiar with things like the, the low-range networks that are, that are coming, public space networks, there's some stuff in the forthcoming LTE specs around different types of broadband and frequencies that'll be used for different types of, you know, it's a pretty amazing space to work in. Um, and we play in a bit of a niche where we really take the existing Jasper Cloud product. It's a portal for provisioning and managing SIMs um, used in, a, in a, an IoT business. And we just add location to it. Um, it's kind of fundamentally disinteresting in some ways because sometimes you think, well, obviously that's GPS. Um, where we found we had a really interesting space is in is some of the industries and solutions that are taking up really big numbers of Internet of Things services um, aren't really GPSable um, because of the hardware, because of where they're located, and because of how they're used. And, uh, uh, you know, this was, we've had a, a bunch of different wins with, uh, for example, kiosks and FPOS systems um, inside the Telstra customer base where they just want to be able to get a certain amount of, of uh, information additional to the, to the device, the information they get from the device, without actually having to add any hardware to the device. So, I mean, fundamentally what we do, as per the previous screens, or sorry for them being a bit small, is basically we place them on a map, we do snail trails, and when we detect some sort of movement, say we locate a device every 30 minutes or so, when we detect a change in positions, we can send uh, callbacks, SMSs, emails, and such to, to, to either an application platform or to a user. Um, architecturally, uh, this kind of reflects a little bit about the Jasper solution. There's some shading in my diagram which doesn't really show up. Um, but the Jasper solution works by fundamentally having a cloud-based HLR uh, that, uh, so they, they use the operator's radio network. They provision SIMs that register with the Jasper HLR and that way they can sort of be distinctly separate and manage separate form of Telstra's or in this case Telstra's accounts. What we do down the bottom is kind of interesting. In the Telstra we actually use the, their existing Ericsson GMLC, Gateway Mobile Location Center. This is the thing that locates things on cellular networks. It's got an uh, open mobile alliance, HTTP based XML spec which goes in, you query the MS, MSISDN or the service ID 
and you get back different types of data depending on how you've set it up, but usually it's something to do with the location or radius. It's not as accurate as GPS. It is in no way, shape or form any good for pedestrian navigation or um, uh, you know, fine, you know, sub meter accuracy. It is kind of interesting though to get lots of different types of, uh, in, lot, lots of different types of information. One of the drivers for the, sort of the work we've been doing this year has been an energy company in Europe. When they have, they're deploying 7,000 or 8,000 smart meters a month all around the country, um, they want to be able to validate that the guys installing them actually installed them when they signed and said they installed them, which is point number one. Um, point number two is they, they, they really found an interesting use case in because the network, because those devices are monitoring an existing power network, so you know, power, the power grid, um, being able to correlate in an immediate sense the actual location of a group of devices to be able to look for clusters that might represent there's an issue with something to do with the power grid. Interesting use case. Um, one of the things we have been doing really heavily this year is working with Telestacks. Um, in their Telscale code base, they had a, a little GMLC, which we have done a lot of work, and that's just gone into general availability release um, about a month or two ago. Um, we see there's a lot of potential to be able to provide all of this stuff as a cloud service in conjunction with Cisco and Jasper. Anyway, trying to, trying to commercialize that solution a bit more broadly beyond um, my home country of Australia. Um, Telstra is one of the few sort of homogenous networks. I mean, everything in their entire network has a big or blue E stamped on it. And um, they really have a first class location infrastructure. We've worked with it for you know, literally eight years now. Um, when we spoke to a lot of different IoT uh, focused MNOs around the world, a um, couple of interesting things. They've got a really different approach to pricing. They've got a lot of different use cases which are very small amounts of data, very low cost devices and many more devices. So the pricing was all very different. And this was challenging because the, the likes of Ericsson charged through the Wazoo for their GMLCs. Always not upfront, but always on a transactional basis. So the idea is anytime you build a business case which has lots and lots of transactions, being location requests, um, you know, the, the cost of the Ericsson infrastructure, the cost of the Ericsson licensing just blows it out of the water. Um, so we need to look at different types of device positionings, things that were really much more uh, aligned with the requirements of IoT and also the requirements of a, of a roaming solution. Um, it's something we could actually deliver in the cloud. So we went back to the drawing board. Um, we were lucky we did have an interested MNO um, who was able to help us by giving us some access to their network. Um, and we had a workshop with them where we looked at some of the different ways we could actually get uh, you know, low cost location data from their network. Um, we could have just put a, a GMLC in there, uh, hit it with SS7 messages. The challenge they had was a lot of their devices are sitting on roaming networks. So they've got a small footprint on their home networks. They have, devi they have devices every month in about 130 different countries. So the, you know, the notion of suddenly sort of sending a lot of SS7 traffic over the roaming network wasn't necessarily in their, in their, in their price range. Um, what we did look at was be able to get some data off their, just call and, and, and data records off their SGSN. Um, just basically data session starts and ends. We're able to capture through that there was some encoding of a, of, of a, of, of a, a serving cell ID and um, kind of avoid any sort of SS7 or SIGTRANS signaling inside the solution. Um, that gives us a cell we've got to translate into a location. Sure, we said let's look at all the things like the open MLS data, open cell ID data. Um, none of that actually worked really well everywhere in the different countries and networks we, we started with for our, when we did our investigation. Um, so we did a bunch of work there. Um, I could explain some of the maths around where we, how we sort of uh, fudge the results if we're missing uh, cell IDs by looking at a triangulation of the cells we do have inside the LAC. And we've done a lot of, I've, I've got a guy in Brisbane who's been doing that for two months solid and he talks in geometrical shapes all the time. Um, and I don't claim to understand it, but it, made, it, it turned out to be pretty cool. Um, so again, this proof of concept driven by a, a, an IoT very focused operator. Um, we really focused on three major customers that really hit that uh, use case sweet spot. Um, and ironically, they were all completely roaming. They never touched their home network. So the traditional GMLC approach wouldn't have worked. Um, we've got the demos happening. In fact, we're about a month behind. We've been doing the POC demonstrations. We've got the customer demonstrations happening this month. 
Um, in terms of what that looks like, um, you can guess the operator, um, but I'm probably not allowed to name them just yet till some contracts are signed. Uh, one of the things we are able to do, these are just the clusters of devices right around the, you know, basically Western Europe, Eastern Europe and Africa. Um, each one of those, we've done some pretty cool stuff to be able to show thousands and thousands of devices um, using web sockets on a single map tile. So it's a live map, it doesn't use a lot of traffic, it takes, it's really quick to load um, and it's pretty quite responsive. And, and again, that's another body of work that we've done. Um, we see it as a pretty interesting and evolving space. Um, obviously, IoT is interesting. Um, I still think that location in the mobile network context could become interesting again. Um, I think the mainstream OEMs of networking equipment have totally looked at one use case and one use case only, which is the regulatory 911 environments. Um, in the same way that they used to charge per transaction for SMSCs, they don't anymore because they recognize that business has just changed. Um, I think there's a lot to do and a lot you can do in specifically in the areas of contextual communications in the, in the consumer world where location is kind of interesting, not in terms of absolute location, you know, what street corner is Sebastian Schumann standing on right now, but is Sebastian at home or at work or somewhere else? Things that can add to context. Um, so we're really trying to create, a, 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 and, and again, through our work with uh, Telestacks, um, create a GMLC environment where we can start to do some of these things without being beholden to the likes of um, uh, Ericsson. I should name, well, I should name only Ericsson. They're not the only one, but God, they're the worst one. Um, and uh, the other thing is generally making sure so that implementation of a cloud-based GMLC is really seamless for a, for a mobile operator, having all their location data coming from third parties or for, you know, open data sources, as well as allowing them to have a point where they can manage their own cell ID data. So they can, if they're on their home network and they, we can manage a set of their data inside our GMLC platform, which doesn't see the outside world. Um, that's a case study what we're doing in telco application development. Any questions? I'm standing between you and drink, so you've been an awesome audience. Um, thank you for allowing me to do what Alan asked me to do, which was pad. We are still 10 minutes early, so you can kind of grab some of the speakers that are still in the room. Any further questions? Um, I do know that the drinks are actually upstairs. I think everyone knows that by now. Um, thanks for joining session two, this stream two this afternoon. Thank you. <laughs>